Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today I will be talking about a new vest that I'm working on, which is not named. It, I just freehanded it, freestyled it. Here it is so far. Um, it is, uh, I'm going to talk about why this bottom band looks really messy in a little bit. Maybe you can't totally tell from here. Yeah, you probably can. Okay, so there's the bottom one and then these two top ones look a lot cleaner. Um, may end up just hacking this part off um, and re-knitting it uh, from the just like down from the top because um, because I'm not sure how much yarn I'm gonna have left at the end so I might have to keep it but we'll see um, I'm trying not to mumble I'm trying not to talk too fast this is like episode 20 or something so I should have learned by now uh, before I get into it I'll tell you what I'm wearing uh, this is the Soldotna crop by Boylan Networks, Caitlin Hunter. Um, it's really popular. There's like thousands of projects on Ravelry. Um, I assume that's because so many people have knit it like more. I think I've made it four times already. Um, yeah, I've made it four times. I made two for other people and then I made, no, three for other people. And then this one, this is the first one I made. I made it for me. Um, I dyed the blue yarn. So this one on the body and then this one uh, this navy here. The purple is Madeline Tosh, and then the white is just a bear knit picks yarn. Um, so I love this pattern. I'm gonna definitely make more um, of these. Probably lots more. It's just really fun and it's easy. And um, you need about, I made mine in sock weight. I always make them in fingering weight yarn or sock weight, depending on what you prefer to say. Um, this is like actually sock yarn. A lot of this, I think all of this yarn has nylon in it. Um, it holds up really well. It doesn't peel that much. Sometimes I shave it, but sort of rarely needs any work. I'm wearing it over a dress so you can see this, my black sleeves are peeking out. Um, so yeah, I wear this with like, it's not to totally cropped. It's, there you go. My tiny desk is so tiny. It's a little bit cropped, but I made it like way more repeats than the pattern set to make. My vertical gauge was a little different. Um, anyway, because I used a lighter weight yarn. Um, but I made it in a, yeah, I, uh, it's sock weight and supposed to be the original is for DK. So I made like, a, I made a size large, um, and it fits like a, a size medium would fit. I think if I had made it in DK weight. Um, so I like that. It's a little, a little loose. I am probably going to make another one following the instructions for a medium to see if I can get it a little more fitted. And I like the longer, length um because then I don't have to wear it with something high-waisted or with something underneath so we'll see maybe I'll make more of those it is fair isle so I mean sort of it's not like traditional Shetland knitting but it does color work all over including with these little polka dots and it's really cute so I like it um yeah you should knit one of these if you like it um I think that there's been some stuff with her about things that she said so I don't want to condone any of that just in case. Um, this is not something that I know a lot about. So uh, the designer, I'm talking about the designer, uh, Caitlin Hunter. I don't, I don't want to get into any of that, but I do think it's a cute pattern. So that's, that's that. Um, this sweater. Okay. Let's talk about it. I am knitting this in Jameson Smith Shetland Heritage yarn. This is a uh, 100% real Shetland wool, worsted spun, not wool and spun, not like the two ply jumper weight. Um, it's 25 grams, 121 meters and 132 yards. This color is silver gray. This is a dyed color in the regular Shetland uh, heritage line. This is Shetland heritage naturals in Shetland black. Uh, this one is looks plumper than this one. Um, not sure why, talked about this before. There's a video, I think it's like episode seven or five or something. It's where I'm talking about Jameson of Smith and Jameson's of Shetland um, and the differences between the wools. And I went into this a little bit. Um, and yeah, I talked about how this one was really skinny and this one was kind of ch chunkier, um, even though they're the same yardage, just because this one's been, I think more processed because it's been dyed, probably washed more little, yeah. Um, but they have the same yardage, unlike like if you were going to use Supreme jumper weight, which is the undyed two ply jumper weight, 
versus jumper weight. Jumper weight supreme comes in bigger balls, but there's like less yardage comparatively because it's not as processed. Um, so it's that's actually a little thicker in that case. So be aware. And Heritage Naturals, they feel pretty much the same. I mean, if you're knitting with these two, they're the same yarn. This is just a little limper in the ball. That's fine. I got these at the Woolly Thistle. They carry a lot of Jameson and Smith stuff. Um, it's really, it's a good, that's a good store. If you want Woolly Wool, they're based in New Hampshire. And they sell lots of wool from the UK and Europe and also the US and Canada. That's like not as processed and that's more like rustic and amazing as I would say. <laughs> I love rustic wool. Um, so yeah, this sweater is, or is a vest. I don't have enough. The reason I don't have enough to make a sweater is because I initially bought this yarn to go in uh, my Yell sweater by Marie Wallen. I was knitting a Yell. Uh, I've got the collection here so I can show you. This is what um, Marie Wallen's Shetland collection. This is also from the Woolly Thistle. Um, they carry all of her stuff. Where's Yell? So this is a beautiful collection, first of all. Um, a lot of, but a lot of Marie Wallen's patterns are um, intended to be knit flat. So you need to be aware of that when you, when you're getting it because you won't always be able to knit the pattern um, as is. Yell is actually knitted with steaks in the round. Um, it's right here, it's a kind of a jacket. I was actually knitting it as a regular cardigan. I was following the instructions for Mayaness, which I've made before, um, and just doing the color work similarly. But I was using Knit Picks palette for this bottom band here, which is all colorful. Um, hers is a lot more muted than mine was. I still have the band, I'm gonna eventually do it. Um, but then I got the Shetland Heritage Naturals for the top, the Shetland Heritage Naturals and regular Shetland Heritage for this top part. Um, and a couple of things just bugged me about it. The, the yarns didn't work well together. That was the main reason. Um, I thought they would, but the, this, actually the silver one was a little closer to palette. That was not that far off, but this one just didn't, the, the feel was different and it didn't really look nice next to the palette band. Um, and the gauges were a little off and it just, it wasn't, it wasn't right. Um, and I also, I don't like knitting color work with long floats and some of the rows in, um, in Yale, in the top part of Yale have like 11 to 20 something. I don't know, like really, really, really long floats where you have to catch the yarn a bunch of times. And I just don't like that. Um, I've done it before. I'm over it. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I hate catching long floats. So. I was like, at one point I was like, okay, I can do this if I do it with palette for the top. Knit Picks palette yarn is really economical. It's really good for Fair Isle. It's kind of a light fingering, it comes in 50 gram balls. It's like, it used to be 350. I don't know what it is now. It was really inexpensive. I will link Knit Picks palette in the show notes if you want to buy some. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just said, okay, I'm gonna rip it out. Um, so I ripped out the, the top, like the, the part of the, of the yellow sweater that, um, that was knit in the Shetland heritage. And I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to knit a Fair Isle vest. And I had that episode, like, I don't know, maybe episode 14 or something, not that long ago where I just like didn't really, I don't know why I felt like I needed to record this episode because I didn't actually have anything to show. I was like, this is how you could design a Fair Isle sweater. And I'm sure it might have been useful for some people, but I didn't really like have anything to show. And that was just silly. Like I was, I don't know, I felt like I wasn't being productive that day. So I recorded it and posted it and that was ridiculous. But anyway, this is, here you go. If you watched episode 14 and you're like, what is she talking about? Here's a, here's an example. Uh, I used my favorite book, The Complete Book of Traditional Fair Isle Knitting by Sheila McGregor to, to, to work this up. Uh, the way that this book uh, was useful is, I'll go into specifics, um, I didn't just like take bands that, that were in here. I decided, um, and I'll go into like how exactly I laid it out and how, how I worked it, how I worked it out. Um, I just, I used her, some of the like inspiration for the lozenges and, um, and the X's in here, but there are a lot of pages in here, like, I'm not going to show them for a long time, but I'll explain what I mean. There's like, uh, like the lozenge and X patterns are really popular in Shetland. So in this book, she often just has like pages where like, here's a bunch of lozenges. Like you just 
pick what you want and you fill it in to your opso. These are all 17, so that's the same height as mine. They're 17 round bands. There's, you know, a whole bunch of pages of these. So I just picked some of the lozenges from here. I might have edited them a little bit, I don't know. Um, sometimes I like most of a lozenge and then I don't like a couple of things, so I tweak them. It doesn't really matter. This is what I used to design. Uh, this is my pattern for me. Um, if you want my charts, just uh, send me a, an email. Happy to give them to you, but I didn't like, I'm not designing this, writing the pattern, grading it for other sizes at all. Um, I'm just like going. Uh, so I am using, like as my base, I for the vest, I just looked in the Vintage Shetland project and there's like, well, I don't even know what it's called. I'll link it in the show notes, what the pattern is called for the vest, of, for the outline I'm using for the vest, like stitch counts. Um, but it's just one of the vests from Susan Crawford's Vintage Shetland project. Um, I actually almost just knit that vest, but then I was like, no, nah, I kind of want to design one. I'll see what happens if I do that. Um, and I, I really like what, how it is working out. Um, I've never knit a vest before, so, but it's basically like knitting a sweater with no sleeves, which is awesome because sleeves take forever. And the body is kind of fun because it's at the beginning and you're like, yeah, this is looking great. I'll get to the sleeve steaks. This is exciting. And then when you're done, you're like, oh, now I have to knit two sleeves that's just so much work <laughs> so hopefully this comes out about 36 inches around which is the size of my body um and i would like it to fit somewhat fitted <laughs> uh not super fitted but like it would be nice to be you know i can wear it kind of like over a collared shirt with some jeans i don't know i don't even know if i'll wear it a lot but i, I like the uh, pattern. I like the design. I'm really enjoying knitting it with this beautiful heritage yarn. Hopefully I have enough. Um, the reason that this bottom band looks kind of busted is because I, so I unraveled this initial yell sweater that I was doing. Um, and I'd actually, so I'd knit a bunch of it. I'd knit like this much, like three re or three and a half reps of the pattern or something. Um, before I was like, no, I don't want to do this. It's too much work and I, I'm not enjoying it. So I ripped it out and I'd actually blocked part of that piece like to see if the gauge worked and then I changed needle sizes again and it just, it was a mess. So I ripped it out and it was like so, um, I don't know if, if you've ever like tried to re-knit with yarn or like knit from a sock blank or something, but it's really um, squiggly. So you can see here, there's the squiggly yarn. This is what it looked like. So that is how much it stretches and it's like super squiggly. And so I had cast on with this yarn. Um, and so the bottom, the, I mean, the ribbed band looks fine. No problems there. But this color work band just like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. I'm not sure what it will look like when I block it, when I reblock this. Um, if I reblock it and it looks fine, then I'm gonna leave it. But like when I'm done the vest, if I block it and it still looks weird, um, I'm just gonna like make a cut um, and then pick up the stitches from like here and then re-knit this and probably just reattach the like graft this um this ribbed band back on because it looks fine and I hate one by one ribbing and I don't want to do any more um than I have to like this was like 20 rounds of it or something um but you can see like these these bands look really um much smoother like normal sort of Fair Isle bands yarn I don't know what I'm talking about, clearly. Um, and then I've got the Peary's in the middle. So if, and I switched the background and foreground colors for those. Oh, some stitches came off the needle. I need to be more careful. I don't have stitch stoppers for this. I don't know why. I should just go get some in my room. Uh, the So these are, including the, the border rows, which are plain Shetland black, this is 19 rounds. So there's 17 total of the Fair Isle pattern. And then for these, it's seven total two on each end and then five for the Peary. Um, and I did the, I think the bands are 32 stitches wide. So I did the the bands, um, the smaller the Peary's, I did them eight stitches wide each so that they would always be symmetrical with the, uh, they would like fit into, because I'm using the stitch markers to mark each repeat just in case I get off. That's a big 32 round row uh, stitch repeat. You should use markers because if you're off, and you don't know where you got off and you're like all the way at the end, you're like, oh my gosh. 
Um, after the first round, they're like not really necessary, but I like to see where my, my progress around the, um, around the, the body is. So that um, is a little bit about the actual patterns. Uh, one thing that I will point out, and I'm not sure I would do this again, is that there's two, like this, uh, two stitches between the X and the lozenge in this band, or the bottom one, which you can sort of see. And there's three stitches between the band and the, or the, excuse me, the X and the lozenge and the, the second band. So it's also just so you know, this is a repeat. It's one, two, three, four bands, two big ones, two small ones, and then start again. Um, this is my chart. This way, actually, I can show you what I mean by that. Okay, there's the chart. I did this in a design app. So you can see here, this is the first one. There's just two stitches of the Shetland black background in between this lozenge and this X. This is the first X. This one's a lot more fancy. This one, there's three, oops, sorry. Those are my photos. Um, there's three stitches between the X and the lozenge. Um, and in the future, I would probably like do the same X and use a different lozenge. Um, and I like them offset. I've kept them offset here. Um, you can see, I'll go back to this. You can see that they're offset, um, which means that, excuse me, um, the middle of this O lines up with the middle of this X and then vice versa. So total, this is, yeah, it's, it's 32 wide and the whole thing is 52 um, rows high with the whole Oops, sorry, just getting rid of a Snapchat there. Um, with the whole thing. Uh, so I anticipate doing four full bands and then doing the arm steaks and I don't know how many it's gonna be from there. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna do a ton of arm hole shaping, but I'm gonna do some because I don't want like a huge wide like cap at the top of my vest. Um, so I'll do some arm hole shaping, but not too much. And I think it's gonna have a V-neck um, sort of like my Bray cardigan, which is finally done, but um, it's not dry, so I can't show it to you. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do like a little V here. Uh, and I don't know, hopefully it's like that wide at the top. I guess I can measure it and see and keep going uh, with it if, you know, until it's, keep going with the shaping until it's the width that I want at the top. Um, yeah, so, the yeah the design process was not too hard but one thing that i i should talk about um again if i did this again i would use the probably use the same x it would also just give it a more cohesive look um but when i design actually i'm gonna tip it sideways I should have taken this out of the case whoa that was loud sorry i typically start with the lozenge i start with the lozenge i place the whole both of the lozenges in the chart um sorry and I, uh, I offset them and I put them how many stitches, I don't know, wide I think I'm going to need the repeat. Like I basically decide on the width of the, of the, each repeat before I fill in the X. So I do that. And then, um, sometimes I decide on the X first and then I count like how many it's going to be total. And then I try to make it within 24, 48, 32, whatever my number is. Um, so I, this one, I put the lozenges in first. I just put the outlines in. I filled them in later. And then I did the X in, like I put two lozenges here and I filled in the X in the negative space. And so I did that here and here and I wanted the X's to be different. Um, and yeah, in hindsight, like this, uh, this one's got a lot more negative space generally. It just like the X is a lot cleaner. This one's just got a lot going on. I think that's fine. The, the lozenge itself also have, has more going on, whereas this one has more kind of space uh, in between. Uh, and the periods are simple. I just basically picked the first ones I could find that had, uh, there were five um, high and eight um, wide. Um, yeah, so that, uh, yeah, I might change that next time, but I, I kind of like it. Um, that's It's really different. Uh, and that's fine. I also had to do some math to figure out where the middle of the front was going to be stitch wise. Like I counted like, okay, this is half. This is another half. That's the front. That's the middle of the front because I wanted the X and O patterns to go like to be centered in the front, like uh, in the, in the middle. So, um, because I don't have an, 
even number, I think, of patterns of repeats. Let me see. Let me count. Can't totally remember how many there are, but I have to put these back on the needles because I'm an idiot and I pulled them off a little bit. Yeah. But no stitch markers fell off, so that's the important thing here. Okay, I did something dumb there and dust stitch definitely got dropped. When this happens, which is frequent because I am careless, um, I really have to like go back and make sure that all the stitches are correct. Okay, so for, like here's the like the la end of the last full repeat on the row, this green one, and then this blue one is where the row starts. So there's eight stitches here before the end of the round. And this is like the side markers. I have two, the side markers are blue and yellow and all the other markers are green. And then the middle front is the white marker uh, here. Sorry, this is complicated because I can't like unscrunch it or else they'll fall off the needles. So that's the front right there, the middle of the front, that white marker where it's centered. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. So there's nine full repeats, so they're not centered. I mean, the like the round doesn't start at like either the halfway point or the beginning of the repeat. It starts eight stitches into the repeat. Um, and I had to do that. Um, I just basically counted backwards. I placed my halfway marker in the front. I mean, I placed my side halfway markers first before I started the fair aisle. This is what I did. I placed the side markers, one at each, like one at the end of the round and then one halfway. And then I placed a locking marker somewhere in the middle exactly in the middle between the front and I counted 16 stitches this way and or 16 stitches this way because it's 32 stitches and uh it's not yeah uh, yes yeah, so the middle stitch is like one to the side because there's an even number of stitches in the repeat but that's fine not noticeable counted backwards 16 placed a marker there counted backwards 16 placed a marker there kept doing that until I got to the beginning of the round, which was just eight stitches before. So that's, I have to, you know, keep in mind that, but it's obvious. Um, I've been you know, doing it for three and a half bands, three bands, something like that now. So it happens. Um, but yeah, it's, it's important to pay attention to that. Um, I think that's it. This is not that short. It's like 20 something minutes. Um, I thought that the last episode was going to be the last time that I recorded at the tiny desk. Um, but it was not because I have like all my stuff is packed up. I have a cast on ban until we get to Vermont on the 18th, which I said, I think in my hats video, which was the last episode. And I, um, like I packed all my books. They're all in my car. My yarn is all in bags. It's I'm like looking at it right now. It's just sitting on the floor of the living room waiting for me to put it in my car. It's in vacuum bags. I thought about leaving some of it here cause I'm going to be back here like at the end of the summer. But, um, I was too afraid that I would like miss some of it and be like, I need to knit with that yarn now. Um, so I'm bringing all of it. Hopefully it fits in my car. I have a Honda Civic, which is not huge. Um, and I got a lot of books this year. I mean, I, in theory, I brought all this stuff down with me, but I didn't bring all the Shetland yarn because I drove home at Christmas to Vermont and I brought a bunch of it back with me in my car. <laughs> um, and I got a lot of books. So the car's gonna be a lot more full. Well, I'm leaving all my winter clothes I don't know. We'll see. I think it's all going to fit in the car, but, uh, there's <laughs> the, the kids and their parents are like, you have so much yarn. Like it, it completely blows their mind to look at my yarn. Like sometimes they'll come into my room and they're like, wow, there's a lot of yarn in here. And I'm like, yeah, there is a lot of yarn in here. Um, this is like a third of the yarn that I own because there's so much more of it in Vermont that I didn't bring with me. <laughs> um, and my mom actually, right before Christmas, she sorted all of it into vacuum bags. I was like, you can wait until I get home to do this. And she's like, no, I really like touching all the yarn. Uh, she's a knitter. She, she knows what she's doing. Uh, so like, I was like, okay, fine. And she had a really fun, enjoyable weekend, um, dumping all my yarn out on the living room floor and sorting it into vacuum bags and putting it away in the basement. So she really likes to organize stuff. Um, I'm very lucky to have her because I don't. I'm a, I'm not like a gross person. Like I clean my dishes and stuff, but I'm not like a neat person. But there's, I really have to remember to like put my clothes away and put my yarn projects away. And I've definitely stepped on any needles before because I have left them on the floor. One time a Chiaogu like sock needle went into my foot and I was hurt. I had to disinfect it just in case. Um, so I'm trying to be more organized. I need to get one of those, like, when I was a, a teenager, I had these, the Ikea cube thing, like the cube shelves. 
Um, I had one of those in my dorm at Penn too, actually, uh, when I was an RA. I had one of those uh, that I like took. A student had left it the year before and I just like was like, I'm putting that in my room because they didn't want it. Um, we used to call that Christmas when the students would move out and they would leave all the stuff they didn't want and the RAs would go take whatever we wanted <laughs> and the rest of it was just going to be trash. So <laughs> anyway, um, whoever moves into that room next will get the beautiful shelves. They're so lucky. Um, that's a good place to keep knitting projects and yarn. I used to keep my yarn in it in the, in the dorm. I would like, it wasn't, I should have put it away, but I didn't, it was just like out in the, in the uh, stacked in the, in the cubes. I didn't have Shetland wool then. I wasn't really a big Shetland knitter, so it was mostly just skeins, um, like bigger skeins. So yeah, um, those are the best. When I move out of this house and have like more space and a reason to buy furniture, um, which will actually be pretty soon, um, I, I might have to get more of those. We will see. Now I'm just talking about my life. <laughs> uh, that's me. Uh, that's what I do. No one's here to tell me to shut up. So <laughs> anyway, that's my best. Here it is one more time. If you need to see it, here's my screenshot for YouTube. I don't know. Sometimes YouTube gives me the weirdest, um, covers and I can change them and you can like upload your own cover. So sometimes I do that if it's a really weird one and there are no good, they'll give you like three options and sometimes none of them are good. So anyway, there it is. This is almost, it's I mean, if I wanted it really cropped, I could start the armholes now, but I'm doing one more of these bands, like the full band, plus, pl probably plus the period. I don't know. I, I think I want it to be about 14 inches um, at this part to be 14 inches, and then I'll do um, the sleeve about eight inches, uh, maybe eight and a half inches, and then I'll be done. So I'm looking forward to getting to the the sleeve part because then it gets smaller, <laughs> and then you do the v-neck and it gets smaller again. Um, that'll be fun. So the hard part about that is that you have to like change your spot in the pattern, which can get sort of annoying. Um, but yeah, you just, you just deal with it. It's fine. Um, okay. That is it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope that everyone is enjoying the weather. It is so hot here, um, in Washington, but we're going up North in a couple of days. So that's exciting probably will still be really really hot in Vermont because that's just Murphy's law um but at least it's like not as muggy and humid and you know it's nice good scenery not a city feels less gross because you know the city is so dirty I have to wash my feet off every day because I like to wear sandals I have those like um foam croc like Birkenstocks that I wear because they're comfy comfortable and they're waterproof um, sometimes I wear sneakers, but with the kids, but I often wear the sandals and then my feet are so nasty by the end of the day. I have to wash off all the filth. So that's way more than you needed to know. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. I'm going to stop here <laughs> because otherwise I'll just keep going forever. So thanks for staying with me. And this has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. See you next time.